Please, let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Our gospel passage this week is another one of all the stories that illustrate the effects of a hardened heart and warns of the consequences. The epistle of St. Paul to Timothy provides excellent teaching that will help us understand the story that the Master Jesus tells. For we, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. The background of the parable of Jesus has connections to ancient rabbinic stories. In Greek, the name Lazarus has the same root consonants as the name Eliezer, who Genesis 15.2 tells us was a servant of Abraham. So maybe, just maybe, Lazarus is representing the former servant of Abraham. But on the other hand, it's very interesting that the name of the rich man is not said, as if it's not worth remembering his name. The Apostle Paul wrote to the young Pastor Timothy, but those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Amen. The rich man's sin of our story was he during his earthly life, he did not see Lazarus. Despite his daily presence at the entrance to his home. But of course, the rich man did see Lazarus because when both died, the rich man in the middle of the torment begged to Abraham to send him Lazarus. He calls him by name to help him. The story of Lazarus and the rich man is a three-act play, like the teacher's plays. The first act portrays the earthly contrast between the wealthy man and Lazarus. The second act describes the rebellion of their conditions in the afterlife. The third act tells about the three requests of the rich man and the three denials of Abraham. So, in the first act, we can see the parable of Lazarus and the rich man in realistic, in its portrayal of the vast gap between rich and poor. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. While Lazarus was covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table, the rich man feasted so closely every day and was dressed in purple, the most costly dress in that time, and fine linen and live in luxury every day. But the second act starts when the story takes a 180 degree turn when both die. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was being tormented. He lifted up his eyes 
And so Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Lazarus was taken by the angels to Abraham's side. This is a poetic way to say that Lazarus was in heaven. But the rich man just was buried. His final destination was the Hades. Or to be more clear, here is the hell. So we can realize the reversal of their conditions in the afterlife. And according to verse 26, between the heaven and hell, a great chasm has been set in place. So that to so who want to go from one side to the other side, nobody can cross over one side to the, know, the other side. After this life, it's not possible for those who suffer torments in hell to go to heaven, nor for those who are in heaven to go to hell. This is extremely important. What we have died, it's not possible for the living or the dead for our final life, destiny changes. No prayer, a beautiful funeral, or a beautiful obituary will not change our final destiny. There are only two final destinations, heaven or hell. While on earth, the rich men had little interest in bringing the God that separated him and Lazarus, however now he is in Hades. And seeing how the fortunes between Lazarus and him have been reversed. The rich man was now desperate to have someone bridge that gap. And that's good to remember. Hell is not a place of fun. Many times I have heard jokers saying, I want to go to hell because there is a place where there is always fun. And that's where our friends go. Well, probably some of our friends will go there. Hopefully not. not. However, hell is not a place of fun. In fact, it was created to torment the people. The Bible of Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. I repeat, hell is not a place of fun. It's a place of eternal torment. I don't enjoy talking about it. But I must tell you that hell is a place of eternal torment. No one in the right mind should even joke about going to that awful place. So the rich man was in a torment place where Lazarus was in the heaven. The third act depicts the rich man's request to the father Abraham for a sign so those still living can avoid his torment, a request that Abraham refuses. In fact, the three demands made by the rich man to Abraham are denied. Let's see. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now, he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Beside all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, 
and no one can cross from there to us. He said, then, I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Amen. Tenderly but firmly, Abraham refuses each of the rich man's requests. The rich man is in torment. And still there, he wants to treat Lazarus as a servant. But for the rich man, it's too late. Abraham will not send Lazarus to help the rich man after death. Lazarus will not bring water to the rich man. Neither Lazarus or someone from the dead will go to see the rich man's family warn them to change their behavior. It's telling that the rich man still did not see Lazarus as a fellow human being. He never addressed Lazarus directly. Instead, he sees Lazarus as a servant whose only purpose is to do, do the binding of, the, of a master. The rich man calls Abraham his father. But earlier in Luke 3.8, we get the message that claiming a religious heritage cannot by itself gain our salvation. Living a life characterized by active compassion to others is a sign that we are responding to God's covenant. John the Baptist tells the crowds, be fruits worthy of repentance. Don't begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise children to Abraham. When John the Baptist said to the crowds, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. God has sons and daughters. He does not have grandsons or granddaughters. Once and for all, I tell you, when you die, it will be useless to say, I am the son or daughter of a faithful Christian, a true believer. That will be of no use to you in the presence of God. You have to have a personal relationship with the Savior, with Jesus Christ. And you must have it in this life. The story are ending with the words of Abraham. If your five brothers do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be combined even if someone rises from the dead. The rich man in hell wanted to start his own evangelistic program. Oh Abraham, let's make a big show and impress people with miracles. Sometimes people wanted to have a big show a church instead of worshiping God. Sometimes we want to go to services to be entertained instead of learning from the word of God and praising Him. The rich man, days of getting other people to do his binding are over. Furthermore, there will be no special messages brought back from the dead for his brothers. 
They have Moses and the prophets, just as everyone else does. And if that is not enough to get their attention, they know God is going to get it either. The best thing about this story is that it's not over yet. For the rich man, yes, but not for us, because we are the five brothers. Even though Father Abraham would not let Lazarus come back from the dead, death to tell us this story, Jesus has sneaked it out for us. Now we have that as well as Moses and the prophets and someone who has risen from the dead to combine us. It is true. All that remains to be seen in what we will do about it. We will have to look at all the Lazarus who live outside of our doors. Will be willing to show compassion to those in need. Will be, be willing to treat all people with dignity and respect. The good news is that Jesus is the Savior and wants no one to be lost. No one to go to hell. If you are not yet a believer, I repeat, if you are not yet a believer in Jesus, and I repeat again, if you are not yet a believer in Jesus, beloved people, beloved brother, beloved sister, I invite you to pray with me. I again, I say because um, Coming to the church every Sunday is perfect, it's good, excellent, well done. But it's not the same that be Christian. Because we can come every Sunday to the church and it's fine, and it's, it's good. But probably you have not the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in your heart yet. So, beloved people, if you are not yet a believer in Jesus, I invite you to pray with me. Please, let's pray. Please, let's pray. Lord, we have Moses and the prophets, but above all, we have Jesus Christ, the only and sufficient Savior. Lord, we don't want to go to hell when we die. We want to go to heaven. We don't want to go to the place of punishment and torment. We want to go to the place of joy and peace. So today, I accept Jesus as my Savior, Lord and Savior. And I say no to sin and the devil. Everything I have is yours. Please help me change to be a better son or daughter to you. Lord Jesus, please enter into my heart. I believe in you and I accept you as my Savior. I have prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen. Amen.